Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. I am your host, David Dodge. My co-host, Mike Slain, was just here a minute ago. We recorded an episode. He had to go look at a house. I'm going to be interviewing one of my good buddies. He's a friend of mine. He's also a local St. Louis investor. He specializes in wholesaling and all things real estate. Uh, welcome, Justin Van Riper. Justin, how the hell are you, my friend? Good, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for coming on. I haven't seen you around town lately, but I do get your emails and I see that you are doing deals. So that is awesome. Let's talk a little bit uh, for those who are new, that most of our listeners are new, um, just a little bit about your history and how you got involved in real estate investing. The reason I want to start there is a lot of our listeners have jobs and they maybe don't invest yet or they're doing it part time. And you, like me, are full time at this. So let's talk a little bit about what you did prior, how you got invest or how you got involved in real estate investing, and then what it was that made you go full time. Sure. Yeah. So as far back as I can remember, like all the way back to high school, I knew I always wanted to own my own business of some sort. Um, so I, you know, always had that. I went to to college, got a degree in business management for that, you know, corporate for that sole purpose essentially. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I had a mentor and he owned like 80 duplexes uh, in, in Columbia, Missouri. I know you're familiar with Columbia, uh, but yeah, so he owned like uh, 80 duplexes there. Um, what was his first name? Uh, Matt. I don't think I know him. Okay, go ahead. Uh, but yeah, he was, he's an older guy, uh, but yeah, so, so he owned like 80 duplexes. Um, he also owned a business. And so after college, uh, I ended up working for him. Um, it had, you know, it was basically, I was a, a sleep tech, uh, a registered polysomnograph technologist, if you want to be technical with it. Uh, so I, I worked for his company for a while um, and I had saved up enough money um, where I was looking at all of my current expenditures. Uh, and at the time, you know, I had a couple of roommates and everything. And I just didn't spend that much money. Um, you know, I, I'm like a year and a half out of college or something like that. And so I was like, you know, this is the time to, to do it. I had been researching, uh, and that's basically how I, I really got started is I, I just would go on to every website I can find and I would just read every article, um, and learn more and more and more. Um, and I was like, you know, I really want to do this. Uh, you know, I've, I've always had this goal to own my own business. Um, this is the time to do it when I don't have, you know, like a family to take care of. My expenses are really low. Um, so I had researched a bunch and, you know, I was like, I'm going to go in. I'm going to do it. And uh, I made the decision, uh, which, you know, it's certainly not for everybody, uh, but I knew that I had a year's worth, you know, of money saved up. Uh, but I, I made the decision that I was like, I don't want to do this, you know, half-heartedly. So I just, I quit, uh, you know, the job and I started uh, in real estate. And it's a good thing I did have that. How long ago was that? What's that? How long ago was that? Uh, that was like 10 years ago. Okay, cool. So you've been doing this full-time 10 years. I have been doing it full-time for about 10 years now. Yeah. Damn, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So and it's a good thing I had that, that yearly the year amount of saved up because it did take a while uh, for that first check. Um, it, it took a while. I, I did a fix and flip. Um, I actually did two uh, in fluorescent. Uh, so they were kind of lower ed ones. Um, you know, I think I'm, I might have made, uh, it was about 12,000, I think, on the, the first one. Uh, but it took, you know, like six months. <laughs> uh, the first fix and flip you did? Yeah. Okay. The first uh, fix and flip, yes. 
yeah, so I didn't wholesale that one. Um, but yeah, I did uh, a couple fix and flips. But yeah, that, that's that's kind of how I got started. Going back to that original question, is uh, it, it's something like I've always just wanted to own my own business, and I just I had a mentor that was into real estate, and then I just started doing a ton of research on my own. Um, so I've always known you as a wholesaler. Yeah, so I've done uh, about I don't know, probably close to a dozen fix and flips. Uh, you know, kind of throughout the years. I haven't done one in a long time, uh, but I was doing a couple every year, um, just kind of like on the side. Um, but yeah, my, my main, you know, bread and butter has always been wholesaling for sure. Got it. Got it. Okay. Very cool. So I, again, I've seen deals from you. I think I've bought deals from you. I know that I've definitely joint venture deals with you. Um, I think the first deal I did was with you, bro. Yeah. I think you did. I think I did my first wholesale deal with you. Yeah. Actually, I'm positive I did. Did you know yeah. that was my first deal? I, I did. I didn't know at the time, um, but I did, you know, I think you told me afterwards. But Let's uh, talk about that real quick, guys. Absolutely. So yeah, this was that. a deal. I remember this. So this. Mm -hmm. So I had been trying to wholesale properties for two and a half, three months on my own. And I had no luck. I was this close to the finish line, right? On a couple of them and they didn't really pan out. And I hired a coach locally here. His name's Joe. I love Joe. I always give Joe a plug. And Joe taught me how to market and, and basically changed my whole perspective on wholesaling and real estate investing, you know, direct to seller, get, get the seller on the phone, find the motivation, make offers and go from there. And, uh, Joe helped me get the marketing out. Well, once I had the marketing out, phones started ringing, right? And I'm running all these appointments, super eager, just ready to fail, fail, fail. Cause I'm like, the quicker I screw up 10 of these things, the quicker I'm going to get one. Right. And that was kind of my mindset. And I had this guy that owned two or three, I think, you know, you own three properties and um, I contracted them all individually and I started marketing these properties and I marked them. I marked them up quite a bit. And then Justin came and said, Hey, I'll pay you that like full price. And I'm like, hell yeah, this whole wholesaling game is what's up. <laughs> and then he marked them up like another 10,000 or something like that. <laughs> and all said and done, I think we each made 12 grand on those two deals each. Yeah. I, I think that's what take. it's been, it's been four or five years right. at this point, but uh, yeah. wow. So Justin, said, I'm going to mark these up. I'm going to pay. And he had a buyer and that kind of goes hand in hand with, with what you're working on now, buyer first wholesaling, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what happened in that situation. So, I mean, that's what, um, you know, I've been doing for a long time and that I, I, you know, teaching other people to do the same is that it's all about having buyers so at least, you know, in, in my opinion, um, it, it's huge to have that because I just work with other investors, other wholesalers. And so of course, you know, you advertise that property and I already knew that I had it sold before I even, you know, contacted you. I was like, you know, I've, I've already got this thing. I know the guy's buying in this neighborhood and he's bought similar yeah. size and square foot and condition based on my picks. He knew guys that his buyer wanted it. So I, I think the spread was, was so healthy that are you knew before you even contacted me that what he was buying and you saw what I was asking. And I remember you didn't haggle me down at all. And in <laughs> fact, you were transparent and we ended up making more by just splitting the deal. Um, but again, I think it opened up my eyes in the beginning too, because, you know, I had gotten deals to the finish line, but didn't cross over. Um, but I was also, chasing these people They're, they weren't motivated and once i started marketing you know once i got a motivated seller on the phone i realized what a motivated seller sounds like it didn't sound like anything i had heard in the previous three months so i realized the problem was me not talking to enough people you know doing 20 or 30 minutes of cold calling every night's not going to cut it unless you're willing to wait six months for a deal right i wasn't doing six to eight hours a day right or whatever but once i started sending mail um, and doing some other things, bandit signs and whatnot, the, the phone started ringing. And at that point I started saying, oh man, I can now hear the motivation. 
when that motivated seller calls. I can identify it very easily. And that was one of them where they were just like, make me an offer. And I made them an offer at like 50 cents on the dollar uh, minus repairs. And they were like, we'll take it. And I was literally like, what? I was like, okay, <laughs> let's go. So love that. Justin, yep. let's talk a little bit about um, your course, right? And guys, I'm going to have all the show notes and links, Justin's bio, all that information over at dpipodcast.com forward slash Justin. So we've eliminated a lot of letters in our old website. Now it's the abbreviation discount property investor, dpipodcast.com. And then forward slash Justin, you're going to have links to uh, his course. He's actually going to give you guys five days for free, which is phenomenal. And then some of the other information in bio that we have on Justin will be over there. But let's, let's go ahead and talk about the course. Yeah. So, uh, so basically it kind of revolves around on that strategy is, uh, you know, I, I was doing the, you know, advertising to, to sellers um, and, you know, I, I was doing quite a bit of that. And I was to the point where, I mean, I was spending like 10 grand a month uh, in, in advertising and, you know, I didn't own a huge company or anything. Um, so it was like, if I weren't getting deals out of it, then, you know, I, I was in trouble. <laughs> you know, I, my overhead was so high. And so I was like, man, I've got these buyers. Like how, how can I, you know, switch this up? How can I kind of, you know, keep my revenue where it's at, or at least close to where it's at, um, while you know, drastically cutting down on on my expenses, and um, and that's what you know, kind of dawned on me is I was like, you know, there's so many wholesalers, and um, you know, it depends obviously what market you're in, but as you know, in our St. Louis market, you know, there's properties that are advertised constantly, you know, through Facebook groups, just through you know, email text blasts, like all the time. So I was like, inventory is really not as big of an issue. And I knew that if I went this strategy, um, I might be, you know, like leaving a little bit of money on the table. Cause if I'm working directly with the seller, um, you know, for instance, like the deal that we did, uh, you know, I could have made $24,000 myself instead of, you know, splitting the, the 12 with you, uh, or splitting the 24 with you each making 12. Um, but, so I knew I was going to make, you know, maybe quite as much, but I also knew that my overhead was going to be drastically lower. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I just started like tweaking, I mean, just constantly like what's working, what's not working. Um, and so I, I just, uh, I, I, you know, essentially came up with this exact system, um, on, you know, kind of how to, uh, to do this. Uh, it's also called, you know, reverse wholesaling, but buyer first wholesaling where, uh, the, the cool thing that I do with them too is, uh, a lot of times when someone's reverse wholesaling, they're going to send ads out to, you know, people that buy properties and they're going to, you know, say, Hey, what's your criteria? Um, well, one way that I kind of like tweak that too, is I kind of told them what I could provide. Um, so instead of them saying, you know, yeah, I only want these areas and then trying to find something, I knew the properties that I could get a lot of um, very easily. And so then at that point, um, I would advertise to the buyers and you know, just tell them, hey, this is what I can provide. I can provide you know, 10% ROI or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I can provide you these properties at 75% of ARV, you know, whatever I was advertising at the time. And they would contact me and they'd say, great, you know, uh, you know, let's, I'm interested. Let's do it. Find me some properties. So then it was just as simple as, you know, going on to, uh, you know, these Facebook groups, talking to uh, other wholesalers and just basically connecting the two pieces uh, and being able to make spread. So, so anyways, I just, I, I continue to tweak and tweak and tweak it. And I've been wanting to, you know, kind of come out with a course showing other people because I, I truly believe it's the easiest way uh, to get into it. I mean, I, I don't have to talk to, you know, a ton of sellers for every deal that I get. Um, like I literally am working with sometimes just one buyer um, that's, you know, one or two buyers that are filling up my whole inventory. Um, and then I'm just getting all the property. So I, I truly think it's very easy for people to do. Um, and so I was like, you know, I, I, I want to be able to share this with others because um, I know that uh, they can have success with it. And I know that there's not a lot of other people that are training you know, this way. So, uh, um, you know, during this quarantine, it gave me an opportunity where I was like, okay, I've been wanting to do this for a while. This is perfect. 
Um, so yeah, I, uh, I basically just went through everything that I have tweaked and done over the course of the last 10 years to come up with, you know, the system that I essentially use myself. Man, I love it. So let's break this down for everyone that's listening or watching. So typically when we wholesale, right, the traditional mindset, the traditional education says we are going to learn how to market to motivated sellers or and or we're going to trade our time to reach out to these sellers directly. Now, this is traditional wholesaling. This is what I teach in my book, The Ultimate Guide to Wholesaling Real Estate. Um, this is what we definitely are, you know, have taught in previous episodes of this podcast. Learn how to market to motivated sellers so your phone starts ringing and or dedicate time to cold calling, cold texting, door knocking, networking, whatever it might be, um, to, to reach out to these you know, suspected people on your behalf. It's either you pay to get your message in front of them and they call you, or you spend your time and energy to get your message in front of them, right? However that might be. From there, you try to locate the motivated ones, like I was saying earlier. Um, and the more you do, the easier that will become because you'll hear it. And if you've never heard a motivated seller on the phone, you, won't, you don't know what that sounds like. But basically, it sounds like I'm calling for help. Like, come out and help me. It's not, oh, I'd maybe sell it for, you know, what Zillow says. You know, it's not, uh, I don't need to sell, but, you know, for the right price. That's not motivated. Motivated is I'm moving next Tuesday. And I don't want this house sitting here vacant. I owe X. Can you pay me that? I don't know. Let's see if that works, right? That's what motivated sounds like. So you get those motivated sellers on the phone. You locate the ones that are motivated. You make offers to every single one of these people though, right? Knowing that 99% of these aren't going to work and it's a numbers game and you get that one under contract. Then you take it to the marketplace. You email it out. You take it to somebody like me or Justin, if you're in our market and we help you sell it, the deal gets done. Justin's got a whole new approach which is really cool. And you had mentioned earlier reverse wholesaling, um, also known as buyer first wholesaling. It's the same thing, right? But you're flipping the script. So instead of you spending a ton of money and or time to locate the motivated seller, which you may or may not have a buyer for, instead you go and you find the buyers first. And that's awesome. So you are doing lots of, and I'm sure in your course, you're going to teach a lot of strategies on how to locate these people and what you, know, what you need to do to market to them. But you locate them first. And then what you do is you find other wholesalers who have deals or you spend your marketing dollars knowing you have a buyer already in specific areas or by specific criteria. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and the kind of cool thing about it is that, uh, you know, I, said there's no shortage of properties. And once you sell one property for someone, um, like I know your team will reach out to me sometimes if you guys don't you know, have a buyer. Because you obviously have a very big buyers list yourself. But, but not all buyers are on there. And the buyers right. come and they go, you know? And it's like, um, you know, just having a bigger reach helps. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, we, yeah. We've, we've done several JVs with you over the last yeah. few years. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I just, I love working with it. And other wholesalers, they just, they always come to me, you know, when they come, when they get something, uh, sometimes they'll do it before they even get under contract. They're like, Hey, I've got this seller that's, you know, looking to sell for, you know, X price. Um, and you know, we've got a good enough relationship that they don't, you know, worry about me kind of like trying to cut them out or anything. Like they just literally won't even have it under contract, but they'll say, what do you think about this? You know, do you have somebody? Yeah. Text you an address or a picture or two and just say, Hey, what do you yeah. think before? And that helps a lot of people know what they need to be making their offers at. I mean, that's, we do that a lot too. You know, it's uh, you can't legally market it, but you can text a friend, right? You can just say, Hey, I'm looking to buy this. They may be a partner of yours essentially. So love that. Yeah. So you get people reaching out that way. You probably get quite a few deals from other wholesalers because they're already doing the marketing. But then again, I'd imagine you do some of your own marketing that's going to be specific to your buyers. To what the buyers are looking for? Um, you know, I, I definitely have plenty. I've done plenty of that in the past, but uh, I really haven't um, a lot recently. So there's enough inventory out there to where you yeah. don't have to spend it. How cool yeah. is that, guys? So I, the reason I, I said that you would are spending because I know you had, right? I ran into you at a mastermind shoot. It's probably been six, eight months ago at this point, maybe longer. Hell, 
Uh, but you were saying, yeah, I just did a $10,000 drop or a $15,000 drop. And I was like, damn, you know, we spend a lot, but not, not all, not that much at once. Typically, you know, it's five, six, seven, eight, something like that. Um, so I was like, wow, that's great. And you were like, yeah, we're just going after the big ones. You know, we're just trying to do the 20, 30, 40 K ones, you know, all these little ones we'll get to at some point, but I'm not chasing them. Like, and that's another thing that I learned along the way is when I quit chasing deals, Justin, and I just said, listen, I don't need to buy that house. However, I will buy it for this. The, the mindset that I had was very simple. It's just like less is more. If you don't like my offer, no problem. We're going to follow up with you, but we're not going to call you in three days asking, you know, if, you know, if we can do something, cause we know the motivation's not there. And what happened when I changed my mindset to quit chasing deals and leads is that they would start chasing me. Oh, well, can you come up a little bit? Well, maybe, but I'm not coming up 40,000, right? I'll maybe come up 3,000, 5,000, right? We're 25 grand apart. You come down 21, I'll come up four. And that's just kind of my whole mindset on it. And ever since I did that and I quit chasing leads, the business has made more money. I've worked less and I've been happier, right? But the only way that you can do that and chase less leads is by having a consistent amount of leads coming in or in your case, knowing that if anything comes across your desk that meets criteria of buyer one, two, three, four, and five, you can get that done, right? Yeah, absolutely yeah. love that. So guys, if you're listening, understand this is the marketing business. Joe taught me that, my coach, back in the day, right? Um, you got to do a lot of marketing. You got to spend time if you don't have money to get your message out there, right? And once you come across that motivated seller, come talk to a wholesaler or put it on your own buyer's list, you can get that done. Or in Justin's case, learn who the buyers are, save yourself the money. He no longer spends money on marketing, at least as of this episode. And now he's just joint venturing. He's basically joint venturing with two people. He's got his, motiv he's got his motivated buyer, which you don't hear that term very often, right? Most of the time you refer to it as a cash buyer, but he's got a motivated cash buyer saying, hey, Justin, anything in this zip code that's you know, 850 square feet or more and it's got three bedrooms or whatever that might be, I want it. So then all he does is he's already on all the email list, guys. He's been in the game 10 years. So that's a big tip right there. If you're new, get on all the local buyers list of all the wholesalers and investment companies. Because then when you do find that buyer like Justin has, it's so easy to just connect the dots. So we talked a little bit about his cash buyer, motivated cash buyer. Then he just finds guys like me that just say, hey, I got this deal. I don't even know if I can sell the damn thing. Mark it up five or 10 grand, just get lucky. And Justin may come in and say, we'll pay you full price plus 20 and get the deal done like he did with my first deal. <laughs> Four and a half, five years ago, five years ago, five and a half years ago. It's been a minute. So I, I, I'm just very passionate about this, Justin. I, uh, I'm glad to have you on today, man. This is great. So tell us a little bit more, man. I don't need to be taking up all the talk time here. Oh, no, you're fine. And the crazy thing about that deal too is that was not a high-end property either. The properties that we... I remember it was two, two properties on College Avenue in Jennings. And if you guys are not familiar with St. Louis, Missouri, Jennings is like a um, C to D neighborhood. It's not like terrible by any means. Yeah. It's definitely not like great schools and it's definitely lower income. Uh, a lot of Section 8. I have a bunch of properties there. Not ashamed of it not saying anything negative about that area. It's just not the best part of town, right? And um, I had them under contract at 12 and you sold them at 24 and there's two of them, hence 24,000. And I think I had marketed these at like 15 or 16 grand from 12 and you were like sold. And then, <laughs> and then you're like, hey, I'm gonna, we're gonna do something. I didn't know anything about at the time. You're like, I'm gonna sign this over to this guy which you had to basically disclose the profit. And I was like, holy, I was like, I'm just going to say it. I was like, holy shit, how can he make more than me? I'm the one that got the contract on it. But luckily, Justin's a super cool dude. And he's like, we're just going to split this, man. We're just going to split this. And uh, yeah, we each made 12,000. Crazy. Two houses, first ones. So yeah. you were doing the buyer first marketing or wholesaling five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there, there's a couple of points I guess I wanted to make on that too. I think you're absolutely right when you said a, a good tip for someone is even if you're not doing deals yet, maybe you still have a full-time job. Maybe it's, you know, you're planning on starting this in three months, whatever. Get on every single buyer's list that you possibly can. Go onto Google and search for your area. So 
I'm just going to use St. Louis as an example and say, uh, we buy houses for cash, St. Louis. And you're going to see a bunch of other wholesalers that are going to come up on the there. The people that are paying. Think mm -hmm. of this, Justin. If somebody is paying Google to get a sponsored ad, that means that they're spending money on marketing. That means they're buying and wholesaling. Mm -hmm. So it's like, get on those people's list immediately because they're doing the most volume. I didn't mean to cut you off. But yeah, do a quick Google search. That's the easiest way to find the people that are in your market that are sending out deals. The second way I would approach would be go to Facebook and find the local groups. And it's that simple. Absolutely. So it's funny that you say that because that's, uh, that's the main things that I teach essentially in my course when, when you've got this buyer who wants the property, those are pretty much the two strategies that are the most important. It's the Facebook groups and getting on, uh, you know, the email and text blasts. And if you're in a big enough market, there's going to be a lot of inventory just by simply doing that. Um, and, and even if, you know, you're not ready to get started yet, at least you're going to have an idea of like what properties are selling for. So then when you go to do it, you can say, oh, I remember in this zip code, this property sold for you know this price. And now the seller is asking this for it. Uh, this could be a good deal. You know, I could get something out of it. Um, so it's, it's just important to, to do that because I mean, you're just gonna, you're gonna know your market. You're also gonna see how these more experienced people are advertising properties. So like, what are they kind of highlighting? You know, stuff like that. Um, so, I would highly recommend, you know. Yeah, it's good to know your market. Get on the list, yeah. guys. I tell it to all my students. Get on the list. See what other people are doing. And you'll see people that, you know, like me or like Justin or I can name 30 other St. Louis investors that do, they, they, they do deals consistently and they're successful at it. So mm -hmm. it's like you don't need to go out and learn. Like just copy what everyone else is doing. We're, we're getting a property under contract. We're taking it to the marketplace or email or text. And we're getting it out to as many people as we can, right? And we're trying to make a spread on that. But in the end, it's a win-win. Somebody's selling, somebody's buying, we're getting paid. Triple win, 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 win. It's yep. so incredibly simple. So get on these lists, see what they're doing. Look at the verbiage they're using in their uh, emails and just do it similar. I mean, a lot of people overthink this, but like sometimes the, 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 the deals, and you'll probably agree with this, but sometimes the deals that sell the fastest have the least amount of information. <laughs> Right. I don't need to go in and take 200 pictures. Now I, I typically do take a lot because I don't like to go back. I'm lazy. So I'll, I'll usually shoot 70 to hundred pictures on average of a property in and out. Um, but the ones that typically sell the fast are just like asking price, ARV and repair estimate and a phone number. You're talking three lines, yep. you know, not even a paragraph really. And as long as you provide adequate pictures or a link to them, people can see it, they can call, they can schedule a time to go view it or even make you an offer. And, and that's it. It's, it's so incredibly simple. So Justin, let's talk about some of, and I don't want to give away too much guys. Cause again, I really want to drive you guys over to um, dpipodcast.com forward slash Justin, where you can learn about his course and actually get access to it for five days for, for free. Um, but I want to talk about just some of the strategies here. We got to give value as well here about, you know, some of the strategies that, that you would teach people to, um, to go out and find those buyers, right? If they're going to do buyer first wholesaling. Yeah. So one thing that I teach is uh, that I fully believe in is you go out and you find the buyers. Okay. So this is huge right here is out of state buyers. Dave, I'm sure you would say the same thing. Out of state buyers pay more than local buyers almost 100% of the time. Now, if you live in California or New York or Texas, that may not be the case. <laughs> yes. But if you live in the Midwest or 46 other states, that is true. Absolutely. We're in Missouri, guys. Justin lives down the street from me, right? So um, the, we have a very, very good market for investors, meaning the returns in our area are extremely high compared to other markets. So 100% agree with you, Justin. Not arguing with you. I'm agreeing here. Uh, if you find somebody that doesn't live in our state, especially if they're on the coasts, you know, they could buy five or six properties for the same amount of money that they may have to spend on one in their own market. So love that one. Huge yeah. tip. Huge tip. And, and yeah, you're exactly right. So like if your actual market is, you know, California, one thing I would maybe even consider is both virtual wholesaling. Uh, that's, that's one option. Now, uh, I mean, there's, there's, you know, some other hurdles that you have to get, you know, through with that. Um, and you can make some really good spreads if you are in California, 
working in the California market. Um, so you might not get as many deals, but you could get some that have much larger spreads. So right. Definitely not saying it's impossible by any means um, to, you know, like wholesale in California or somewhere like that. No, not at all. But yeah. it's going to be easier to get to get out of state people in our market. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. And really a lot of the markets, most of the markets, right? If you're anywhere in the Midwest, um, absolutely. Try to find the yeah. out of state people. Um, have you had any luck pulling lists of cash buyers? I know like I use PropStream to run all my comps and to pull my list. I don't do a ton of buyer marketing at this point because I did it years ago and built my list and I'm to the point now where I don't really necessarily you know need to build it because I got guys like you that have the buyers that I don't right but if you are new and you're brand new and you decide hey I want to do some buyer first wholesaling and this is the beginning um, list let's talk about that do you have any any insight any pros any cons any so there's a couple things with that. First off, uh, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I think this is huge. Uh, I've done this in the past where I've, you know, marketed to all the cash buyers, everyone who had, you know, purchased the property and last- You buy a list off of like, I think list source sells them. I know PropStream yeah. does. And I think the other really big one is REWW. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I've definitely done that in the past. And what happens, you get a ton of buyers that call you back. I mean, because most people who have purchased one property, and you can even sort it by purchase multiple ones, but anybody's purchased one, most, most of them want to purchase more. Um, they, they just do. So you'll get a ton of people that will call you. But what happens is most of the time you're saying, well, I want this particular zip code at this price, or they're, they're very specific. Yeah, which is fine. But if you have 30, 50, 300 people calling with these different criteria, what and I'm gonna I'm gonna just take the I'm gonna cut you off here. I apologize in advance, but that creates more work. I mean, that's probably where you're going with this, right? Now all of a sudden I got 50 buyers that want different things, and yeah, maybe that's good, but maybe not. Maybe it's not good to do that. So yeah, I just want to hear your advice on this. Yeah. So so what I like to do instead, especially as you mentioned, you know, St. Louis is a great market for like cash flow, and so what I will do. Uh, I've done a couple different things in the past. I've done like ROI. So I've done, you know, just essentially um, we can offer properties consistently. Uh, and, and I will say this too. I'll just say I'm only looking to work with people that are serious. They're going to purchase more than 10 properties this year. I can provide you, uh, you know, properties at at least 10% uh, projected ROI. Um, you know, you'll have contractor bid, you have all this, you know, I can give you referrals, I guess, for contractors, property managers, all this. Uh, but I'm very specific with the buyer that I'm looking for. So I don't let the buyer kind of like dictate everything. I give the exact criteria that I can provide. And if you're interested in that at that point, you have to sell me that you're going to be a good person to work with me. All right. So he's taking the same principle, guys, that I just talked about with chasing the motivated sellers. And he's applied it to motivated cash buyers. He's not chasing these people anymore, right? And that was what I just described because that's what I had done in the beginning is I went and I bought a list and I sent a simple little letter just saying, hey, I'm Dave, I'm buying in the area. I'm not trying to sell you anything um, in this postcard or in this letter. However, if you are looking to buy, here's a URL or here's a phone number, let's connect. Maybe I can get you a deal. And it worked, but it created a lot of work because I, again, I got all these people calling that say, hey, I only want the south side of 63131. And I only want the northeast side of 63024 or whatever. And I, I, don't, I don't buy two bedrooms in this zip code, only three. But in this zip code, I'll buy two. And before you know it, you got 75 different things that you're trying to keep track of. And it's a pain in the ass. And it creates more work. And instead, what he's doing is he's saying, listen, I don't really care exactly what you're looking for. But this is what I can provide. Does it fit your requirements? And if it does, let's work together. And now all I need is a name, a phone, and an email. We don't even need to talk about all the little knickknacks. I'm just gonna send you deals. And the ones you don't like, archive them, delete them. The ones you want, pick up the phone and call me and we'll do a deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of them, like, I will work with them even if they say yes, we have that initial conversation and they say, you know, yeah, I'm looking to purchase at least 10. Yes, it's, you know, meets my criteria or whatever. Uh, it will be, you know, as simple as them literally saying, go out and find me something. So as soon as I do, um, which, you know, a lot of times I can literally do in an hour that day. I can go on and yeah. an hour uh, do that. And I can be like, all right, here's what I got. 
and I would send, you know, I, I could send that property or properties or whatever to them. Uh, you know, I, I contact, uh, one thing I guess I do want to say beforehand is, uh, you know, for, to be able to send it to kind of these buyers, uh, there's a couple things with this is you always want to be upfront with the other person, especially other wholesaler. Yep. I like the transparency approach big time. Tell, I like to tell everybody what I'm doing, even the seller. You know, yeah. if I'm going to wholesale it and I do plan on closing on it, I'll tell them, you know, I'm going to market this property, but I'm going to close on it regardless. Or I'll just tell them straight up, hey, I can't buy it, but I maybe can help you sell it. Do you want me to market it? If they say no, then that's their problem. Yep. Right. And, and I'll just circle back in two months. Hey, you still own it? You ready for me to help you? I'm only going to get paid if you get paid. Oh, you are? Did I not tell you that the first time around, you idiot? Let's do this, right? And that's how it is. You got to be real with people. You got to be transparent. You don't want to be rude. I was kidding there when I said it that way. But that's that's the mindset that you got to have, right? Love yeah. it. Love it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and a tip with that to go along with exactly what you're saying, you can do this with the actual homeowners. You can do this with uh, another wholesaler, like when I partner with another wholesaler. You can sign a simple option contract with them. The option contract binds nobody. Nobody has. And it's my favorite tool in my belt. Isn't it great? Literally. We just, we did three yeah. wholesales last week. Uh, closed on three. Two funded last week, one funded Monday. Um, but two of the three came from option agreements, uh -huh. which most wholesalers would have walked away from that. There was very okay. little equity or they just weren't willing to give us a great deal. And we just said, hey, let's just try it. And we made eight grand on one and nine grand on the other. That it's people beautiful. wouldn't, you know, not home runs by any means. But guys, if you, who could, who, I mean, who could use an extra eight or 9,000 right now? Probably everyone listening to this, you know, like literally that's, that's, that's a lot of money. And if you're not an investor and haven't done this before, that could be months and months and months of your current salary, depending on your situation. I mean, that's a lot of money. And these are deals that we converted from people that we didn't think was a deal. We used an option agreement. So if you're not familiar with the option agreement, will you explain that to people real quick? Yeah. So, so basically in, in the specific, the option contract that I use has specific verbiage in there that states this, uh, that I'll get to in a second, but uh, let's say, you know, you're the other wholesaler seller. This would be what I would say to you. I say, you know, Hey numbers, especially if you're just a homeowner, I'll, I'll say to you, I'm like, Hey, the numbers aren't going to work for us personally. However, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and I have a very large network of other investors. Um, so what we could do is we can sign an option contract for this price that you're wanting to get for it. Um, and I will go ahead and I can then send it to some of these investors that are in my network. And I'll tell them there's specific verbiage and I'll show it to them and I'll say, if you find a buyer before I do, then this option is automatically- Non-exclusive. Love yep. it. Non-exclusive. I tell them that too, man. Non-exclusive, yeah. meaning I only get paid if I help you. And if yeah. you find somebody else, all I ask is that you tell me. Just keep me in the loop. Yep. Right? I have no intentions of doing anything but helping you. I don't plan on suing you. You know, I'll, I'll even say that. Like, there's, there's no reason. Basically, yeah. I only get paid if I can help you. And if I don't help you, at least I tried. And you don't have yeah. to pay me to try. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Anybody and everybody, if you explain an option properly, there should, there's no reason that they wouldn't want that. Yeah. Unless they didn't want it on the MLS and that was part of your strategy, which again, you have to be very transparent with people about. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think it's great, man. Option contracts are awesome. Um, I don't know if you have one in your course. We have one available for free in the, in free, at the freewholesalecourse.com. So if you guys want an option agreement, go check it out. We have a free one that we've been giving away for five years. Had over 10,000 people take our course at this point. Freewholesalecourse.com. Get yourself a free option of contract. Love it. Yeah. It is huge. I think it, it's so great. I mean, it, it literally, like, the only thing it does is it gives them access to all of those buyers. All those buyers that you spend a lot of time and money um, to get, it gives them access to it. So when I've sold, you know, stuff through the option and I've been, you know, very transparent, uh, I've had so many sellers that are like, they had multiple properties and they're like, I can't even tell you how much of a blessing that you've been, that you were able to, you know, sell these properties, um, you know, for us. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like, cause I mean, well, you're under promising and over delivering yeah. when you close on an option every time is it, yeah. if, you know, assuming that you explain it properly. Cause you know, when I go, when I say, listen, there's no guarantee, but if I don't try, how are you going to know? Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay me unless I do something. And typically I'm going to make money on top. I mean, it's like a no brainer for the seller. Right. Yeah. Like as an investor, 
I never want to be a motivated seller ever, right? But in the event that I become one, anybody that brings me an option that's not exclusive, I'll sign it. I'll sign 50 of them because it's like, why not, right? Like right. go out, market it, see what you can do. It yeah. is what it is. So I, I love the option agreement. Great tool. Very cool. Very cool. Justin, tell me about, um, about what's next. So, you know, today is May 13th. This episode will publish in about two weeks so towards the end of May. You know, we're in the middle of this COVID thing. I guess we're kind of hopefully coming off the back end of it at this point. But as of today's episode, as of us recording this right now, if it's live, it's live, of course. But the podcast, two weeks trailing, everything's still shut down. You know, we've been shut down for seven weeks, maybe going on even eight weeks at this week, maybe. I think this is eight weeks. And we're just getting ready to open things up. But what do you foresee is going to start happening with the market? And are you going to start doing more marketing for motivated sellers? Or are you going to stick to where you're at with, the, with just the co-wholesaling of the, the wholesalers and the, and the buyers that you got? Um, yeah, as far as where it's going, um, honestly, it's anybody's guess, um, you know, on, on what's going to happen. I mean, everyone can make, you know, their predictions. Um, and if every, anyone, you know, had it exactly right, I mean, you would make a ton of money. Right. And I know, and I know you don't have a crystal ball. I was just curious on what your, sure what your opinion of kind of where it's going, you know, I think there's going to be a flood of houses, but I don't think it's going to be right away. And again, this is just my opinion. I think that we're looking at six months before we see this flood because you have the deferments, which could easily get extended if, the, if there's another wave. Right. And um, you know, depending on how much longer people are going to be out, some people are making more money on unemployment than they were working. And, you know, it doesn't mean they're going to put that towards their mortgage, but it just goes to show you, like, there's a lot of people out there that are really not looking to get back to work. They're, they're happy with this current situation. So right. I was just kind of curious on where your mind was at with that. Yeah, and I do agree. Um, I mean, I think uh, lender guidelines, that's going to be another factor that uh, and it will be, as you were saying, in my opinion, I think the same thing. It's going to be delayed until we actually see the real effects from from all of this so. doesn't mean you can't start building that big ass funnel now though guys with your marketing and yeah. your motivated sellers you find somebody that's somewhat motivated today in six months they may be very motivated and that's kind of how this business works marketing follow up follow up follow up do a deal that's it it's that simple and i would definitely tell people don't be scared right now to try to you know do deals because you still can i mean you said you know you guys we did three time. deals last week yeah three deals yeah. I mean, they're, they're still happening guys. So, uh, you know, you don't need to, you know, fully the retail market's been hot, man. Yeah. Properties are selling like rehabbed ones and nice properties, you know, that, that not, you know, people that I know or my team, we've sold a couple in the last four or five weeks. I think we've sold three in the last five weeks that are retail. All of them have sold within about a week. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have had multiple offers. I know the guys over at three doors, I'm in their mastermind. They've, they've been selling a ton of them multiple offers, same day type things. So, I mean, the retail markets, it's doing really well, but again, the, the lender guidelines may come into play here. If somebody hasn't received a paycheck in two months, mm -hmm. it may slow things down. But again, who, who knows? We'll, we'll have to see. Sure. So awesome. Yeah, that's without open houses too. You know, that all these properties. That's without open houses. Houses. <laughs> I forgot about that. I saw a meme this morning and it was like talking about that. It was like, I sold 10 houses this weekend and had no open houses. You know, it's like, that's kind of unheard of, but right. wow, that's really, really cool, man. Well, Justin, um, leave us with some parting words. You know, if you are new to this business, obviously go check out all things, Justin, DPI podcast.com forward slash Justin simple domain. Again, I'm going to have a link to his course. I'm going to have his bio over there and all the places that you can find Justin online, like his socials and whatnot. But if somebody's new to this, what would be your advice to them? Like, where would they start and what should they focus on? Um, so it's funny, actually, when I, when I very first started in wholesaling, uh, I was partnered, right? I, I partnered with uh, a guy who, who did a uh, pretty big volume. Uh, first name's Chris. Uh, he, Chris he, K? Yeah. Yeah, no, I love Chris. No, no, no. Uh, no. Different Not Chris. Him doesn't matter it doesn't matter anyway, go ahead anyway, yeah so but he did a lot of volume and so when i first got started in actual wholesaling um i basically was doing this from from kind of the beginning um and over the years you know, I've, i've just i've tried so many different things and tweaked it and worked with it or whatever but that's how i even first got started is uh find other wholesalers totally uh, agree 
Yeah, like to, you know, try to help them out. Hire a coach or go yeah. partner with people and do the dirty work, right? Go run the appointments, go do the driving for dollars, hang the bandit signs, do what they don't want to do so you can get partnered in on the deal so you can see how it works. Because the funny thing is, is once you see how simple it is, you're, you're done. You're, you're going to go off on your own. You're going to be able to do it by yourself. But if you don't have the funds to hire a coach, just go partner with some other wholesalers or other investors in your area. Hiring a coach, I think is going to be the quickest way because you're paying not so much for education, even though that may sound contrary to what you think a coach is. You're really paying for, you know, two things. You're paying for speed and accountability. You know, that's what my coaching program consists of. That's what most others is, you know, we're going to get you there in, you know, one or two months versus six, and we're going to hold you accountable. And if you fail, it's not because you didn't act with, with what the program said. It's because you didn't act with what needs to happen, right? You didn't do anything. So love that. Get yourself a coach or go, go work with other people. And again, that's how I got started. I'm sitting here talking to one of the first guys that, I did a joint venture with in the beginning and I learned it. You basically introduced me to an assignment agreement. I didn't know what the hell that was, you know, but now I use them weekly. So, <laughs> yeah. Love it. yeah. Love it. And it's crazy that uh, someone like, you know, yourself or, or myself, I mean, we're open to, you know, if you're willing, now if you just want to ask questions, uh, you know, constantly, you know, like if you're, I don't know. I guess I'm not wording this correctly, but uh, if you're willing to like say, I'm going to, how can I help you to another, you know, hope successful investor in your area? If you Changes have, the, the dynamic completely. It does. And you do what you can do to help them. You're going to see how they do what they do. And they're going to be a lot more likely to, you know, kind of help you out. And stuff. When people say, Hey, I want to pick your brain. Nope. Not interested. Yeah. Like how does, <laughs> How does that benefit me? But if somebody says, hey, I'm down to come to the office and cold call four hours a week, I'm like, perfect. Do you want to learn the business? Let's go do some deals together. You are showing me that you're committed to doing something. You know, hey, I'll go hang your bandit signs if you can bring me on some of your appointments. Great. Come to the office, pick up 200 of them. Let me know when they're all out. And the next appointment I get, you're going to be on it with me. I'm not going to say no to that. You're helping me help you. Mm -hmm. When people just want, 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 it changes the whole scope. And that's where the coaching comes in. It's like, I'll do it, but I'm going to have to charge you for it. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of my time to teach somebody that may not even want to do it, you know, or has the uh, the action in them, the massive action to go actually do do it. So love it. Guys, check out Justin Van Riper. He's the man, local St. Louis legend. He's been doing this for about 10 years. Buyer First Wholesaling is a brand new course that he just launched. He's going to give you guys five free days. Go check it out. You can get all things Justin as well as the link to the course and find him on socials over at the podcast website, dpipodcast.com forward slash Justin. Guys, we are going to sign off on that note. Justin, thanks again for coming on the show. Grateful to have you and know you as a friend. Until next time, signing off, guys. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.